folks, Ben Gilbert here with uh, Xbox head Phil Spencer. Xbox head, Xbox I like that. Xbox head, head of Xbox, <laughs> Phil Spencer. Uh, your head is not shaped like an Xbox. <laughs> That would be uh, cool, though. And we're here at the Galen Center. It's being torn down behind us. Uh, yeah. You guys have just given your E3 2014 presentation. That's right. Uh, you talk games, games, games. I have that written in all caps in my <laughs> notebook three times and underlined. Uh, and that was really the presentation, right? It was 90 minutes of you guys talking games. Uh, and it was really cool and interesting. And there's a lot of good games to come from it. I'm going to talk to you about some games okay. and some other stuff. Because you guys weren't talking. I don't think there was a single mention of Connect in that entire press conference. Um, and I had one one uh, reader who asked specifically, like, what does this mean for folks who are big into Connect? Yeah, um, so, I mean, there's a couple things, and I know not everybody can come to the show floor. If you come to the f show floor, you'll see more Connect games there. Sure. I'll just say, kind of stylistically, I found over the years that demoing some of the Connect games on stage is a little bit of a challenge. Sure. Uh, so I think the show floor and letting people experience the Connect games is a great place. Having Alex come out and talk about Dance Central and Fantasia was great. You know, I also, and this will sound kind of like a tease, but like I, I didn't talk about which games use the A button either, right? In a way, I'm really more about the games themselves. A lot of the games in there that we showed use Connect in some way, whether it's gesture, whether it's voice. I really want to make the soul of what we're about, the games that people can play. The system capabilities that make those games possible, those we can talk about at the right time, whether it's live, dedicated servers and stuff, but I want the content itself to be the star. So uh, along those same lines, the content beyond games on the Xbox One. I love my Xbox One for its ability to play music. Great. That I love that I can walk into a room and turn on my voice and start music just like that with my yeah. voice while I'm doing other stuff. When am I going to get Spotify and all these other things on my Xbox One? All these other, not specifically Spotify, but more music apps. Yeah, well, we announced that we have more entertainment apps. I'll just kind of lump them all into that camp coming this year. We made a move in May to move the entertainment apps outside of gold so anybody can use them, which I thought was an important step to making us the best place for people who are fans of Netflix or Amazon to, to use those, those applications. Uh, the entertainment functionality in our box, people should take away, is critically important to our long-term success. Sure. When I'm at E3, I know this is a game show. Our platform has to win with gamers first and foremost, so I am going to focus on the games. But we're going to continue to focus on being the best place for people to consume entertainment, to listen to music, to watch television, to watch their movies. Uh, we see it. We've had over a billion voice commands issued on Xbox One since we launched. People like using voice. They like listening to to music and watching their, their television stuff, and it's something that we've got to continue to invest in as a platform. Uh, and you guys have started introducing games with gold on Xbox One, and that stuff is evolving, but I guess I'm wondering about how you see the future of Xbox Live, right? How, how it evolves to become the top dog again. The, the competition between us and Sony, you can take the live service, you can take console all up, you can take games. I think it's just good for consumers, good for gamers. Absolutely. So I think it's great that yeah. we're both pushing. Uh, I do think they've done a nice job with their instant game collection. You know, I'm a PS4 customer and a Vita customer. I like getting free games. Sure. You know, we looked at games with gold and something that we wanted to build out. We're focusing a lot on the tech behind Xbox Live right now and dedicated servers and things like Crackdown and different games that are using Xbox Live in different ways. I think as both companies continue to push themselves in terms of what our live services, I I'm not trying to name their service live, sure. but our online services become ours live. Uh, I think it it's good. The, the competition is, is good. I think having the connection to the developers, the studios that are creating the great games is actually, in my mind, critical. Uh, it's because the games are really the things that move the state of the art. The sure. platform innovation along with the games using that platform innovation and that symbiotic relationship between a studio that's trying to build something special and the platform as it evolves, I think is where we end up with the best result. We saw that with Live at the release of Halo 2 and the Tsunami build of Xbox Live with the code name. Uh, and we kind of have a similar thing going on with Dave Jones right now with Crackdown and the live team as he looks at the future. So that, what does that mean, I guess, then, in terms of Dave Jones and Crackdown? And yeah, so I don't want to make it just about Crackdown because a lot of the games talked about dedicated servers and other things, but I'll pick, Crackdown's one of my favorites, I'll pick Dave and, and Crackdown. When we originally came up with the idea behind Xbox One and the investments we would make in cloud CPUs, what we said is there's some calculations that we could actually take out of your console that's sitting in your family room and put them up in the cloud to make the overall experience better. Like the stuff that Titanfall does. Yeah, Titanfall right. does AI work in the cloud, absolutely, sure. and it's, it's been great. 
uh, dedicated servers in terms of just hosting the game so there's no cheating and everybody's got kind of the, the, the same latency between their gameplay I think is a critical part. Crackdown, we're actually doing the destruction calculations in the cloud. Oh. And then locally what you see is you actually see the, the rendering of, of where the different particles is, as things are, are landing on the ground. We kind of ended our video with this huge, massive explosion. Right. We showed a little bit of this technology at Microsoft's Build Conference a couple months ago. Speaking of Build, uh, Windows apps running on the Xbox One. That's something that you guys have said is possible. Windows 8 is obviously part of the Xbox One. Right. Uh, when can we expect that kind of stuff? When uh, That seems like a step that is would be a huge step for Microsoft, right? It seems like that would be another huge step in kind of bringing together all the different platforms that Microsoft offers. Yeah, Terry Meyerson at the Build Conference talked about right. that. You know, one of the things when we made the investment in Windows coming to Xbox, part of that is to ease the development for application developers so they don't have to build separate versions of their apps for all the Microsoft platforms. So how about if we could natively run Xbox applications? It's in the roadmap. You know, we're doing our monthly updates now, which people see. I think the monthly updates have had a big impact on how people look at Xbox One. Things like the Windows apps uh, are part of our long-term roadmap. For the, We don't have a date right now for when that'll hit, uh, but I agree with you. I think it's something that will open up more and more things that people can do with their Xbox, which is just a good thing. But we know that the core that Xbox has to be about, the thing it's got to win with first, is to be the best game console. Sure. Right? It's, and if, if I think about the last year, you know, for me, it's on, on this E3 and even coming in a couple months ago as the head of Xbox, it's really been about making sure we understand who customer priority number one is. We need to build the best game console and have the best games line up 2014 and beyond. And we start kind of every meeting and everything, every kind of policy and, and feature edition, everything is, let's make sure we're really building a, a platform that's the best platform for gamers. As that builds out, there are other things that we can talk about bringing that I think make the experience just better. Okay, so I've got a couple of reader questions that I wanted to get out before we end this. Okay. Uh, so uh, the first one, uh, what is MS doing? Uh, what is Microsoft doing to uh, challenge Sony's Project Morpheus? You know, I look at, at VR as an interesting technology. I'm kind of watching what's going on out there. I don't really think it's a mainstream technology yet today. Uh, the nice thing at, at Microsoft and Xbox is we remain kind of invested in experimenting with a lot of what's out there, whether it's voice, whether it's motion. Sure. You know, and uh, right now, I'd say we, we kind of have we have our kind of skunk work stuff that we're just kind of working through. But right now, we're kind of watching how the VR space evolves to see if it really ends up as a mainstream consumer scenario. Next question, uh, when will we see an Xbox 360 emulator on Xbox? Oh. Is that even possible? Um, so, not to geek out on it, you know, there was a, Xbox 360 is obviously a power PC based architecture. Right. We've got an x86 architecture on Xbox One, which does make the translation a little more challenging. Uh, you know, it's the, the interesting thing, Xbox 360 is an amazing con has amazing content catalog. You know, one of the largest content catalogs ever created. And I think about that content, I don't want that content to just waste away. I want it to be content that people can play for many years. There are a lot of ways for us to enable that. It's something that I'm sitting down with the team and we're brainstorming on. We don't really have a, a plan yet that I could communicate in a way. But I'll say I want to make sure that that content is stuff that people can play. Uh, and I think that's uh, an important part of it of investing in an online kind of connected community sure. is that the content that I acquire and that I'm playing is something that can carry forward with me. Right now there isn't a plan, so just to be clear to people, uh, but there's a, it's a plan, not a plan that we communicate, but it, it's something that we have conversations about. What about learning commands or macros or anything? I guess the evolution of connect control yeah. stuff. You know? Yeah, the, it's, we, the team up in Redmond that's working on Connect uh, is as, as big, frankly, as it, it's, it's been since launch. We are focused on Connect and the evolution of that technology. Uh, the price uh, options we gave people were not at all related to any lack of, of focus or commitment to Connect. We think it's a long-term differentiator for our, our platform. Uh, you will hear from us as the monthly updates come out, just like the, I think the monthly update in June had some nice smart glass work, which I'm not saying is Connect. I'm just saying, we will focus and, and sequence our, our, our investments in the different parts of the program and Connect will remain part of that. I think I said we've had over a billion voice commands. So we know voice specifically is thing, are things that people are, is something that people are using. Yeah. And I want to make sure it continues to get better 
uh, gesture as well. And it's, uh, it is something from a technology and platform standpoint, we remain uh, focused on and invested in, and you'll see the evolution of Connect as, you can, as we continue with the program. When will uh, the Xbox One play Blu-ray 3D movies and support true surround sound through uh, TV pass-through? I know these are hyper-techy questions. No, no, it's not the tech. tech. It's just I don't really have a date for either one of them. Uh, Blu-ray 3D, I mean, it's really just been a prioritization thing for us as we look at what people are doing. People are watching Blu-ray movies on Xbox. We can kind of see that as we see the use of the app. Um, more frankly than I thought they would. I just thought most people would while watching the movie stream, but right. the Blu-ray app gets used quite a bit. So it's had us look at the 3D space. Maybe we should think more completely about that. But right now we don't have anything to announce in terms of a date uh, for that technology. And when we bring it, it's really just been prioritizing, prioritizing things that are higher on the stack right now. And the true surround sound? Kind of the same, right? As, as we're working, it's, you know, no piece of, of technology or work does not come without cost to something sure. else that we're doing. Uh, we want to first and foremost be the best place to play games. And we did the, the work in June around the GPU reserve as an example, right, which right. developers are picking up. I'm kind of focusing on that work, prioritizing work like that before we get to some of the other kind of non-game features of the platform, just because I want to make sure we have the, the best pace for people to play. A little unicycle uh, that's battery powered. And so Sarah's moving forward right now by actually leaning forward. Uh, and then she can move back by leaning back and turn to the side. by.